Good morning. Federica, are you in? So let's wait a couple of minutes as we have some problems with. Uh... Hi. Yeah, Federica. Good morning. Are you ready? We are just. Uh few minutes because uh, I wait for okay the, the screen is, uh, the presentation is uh, fine okay but uh, let's wait a couple of minutes before starting mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Just a second. So in the meantime, that uh, Federica is setting up uh, everything. Uh, I would like to give you a welcome to this uh, lesson. It's uh, different from the other seminar because uh, he, today we started uh, a new um, a new kind of presentation because I, I have asked it to my collaborators and uh, Federica in this case uh, worked with me since uh, one year. And uh, she is working on uh, a research project on uh, parasite of turtles here in Sardinia. And therefore, uh, one of the things I asked her is to uh, deliver to, to you her experience in uh, field practice uh, with all the problems that uh, a student can uh, get when uh, focusing on research at the first time, I can say. And uh, this uh, will be one uh, of the of four presentation because also next uh, Tuesday, uh, Francesca will speak about uh, her research project on uh, foxes. And uh, next Monday, uh, we will have two PhD students that will speak about their research in uh, wild boar uh, parasites. Uh, it's uh, interesting because uh, you uh, will get confidence uh, on some experts uh, that uh, you will develop uh, probably next year while uh, um, entering in uh, internet with some professor to, uh, to make your uh, thesis and your research uh, project. So, um, I will give uh, the word to, to Federica and uh, I asked her to, to speak about what he has done and also what is the overall uh, scenario in which uh, her research uh, thesis is, um, is done. So uh, welcome and uh, you can uh, you, you can send the, the question to, to her and to me. Uh, and uh, so have a nice uh, presentation. Thank you. You hear me well? Yes. Okay. So good morning, everyone. And my name is Federica and I am a master degree student in wildlife management, conservation and control. And my work is on Enzo side of a tortoise with Professor Valcasia and uh, began last September. Uh, two date collected among uh, um, the difficulty in finding tortoise in the cold month. Of course, they, I, they uh, hibernate. And the pandemic, I was able to analyze about uh, 80 
protein sample of tortoise from farms, legal of course, and then the property of private citizens. I'm not a veterinarian. I have a degree in natural science and I'm not an expert parasitologist for now. And, uh, but everything I have learned during my experience in the field is uh, collected in this presentation. I hope I don't get too bored. I apologize for my English accent and I welcome to the magic world of the tortoise. So regarding the status of the heart, next. Okay, thank you. Um, we know if tortoise belong to the reptile class and the reptiles have become increased common domestic pets. And while several reptile species sold as a pet animal are breeding captivity, most of them are taken from the wild or are um, the offspring of wild, wild co-parents. And reptiles are among the most threatened animals in the, um, the pet trade because of their special needs for diets and also for habitat. And for many species, the basic requirements for nutrition and housing are unknown. So pet reptiles are highly susceptible to metabolic diseases. In the wild, reptiles rarely come into contact with the owner waste or uneaten un um, food which is a common occurrence in the captivity. The infestation uh, with uh, the parasite play an important role. Stressful life, concentration of the animals and the, um, and the presence of, uh, of different species in a small living space, actuate development, multiplication and spreading of the parasite, which in nature live in cohabitation with their hosts. All these factors suppress the immune response in reptiles and increase the opportunity for viruses, for bacteria, yeast, and, fungi, and fungus to cause infection and consequent diseases. Reptiles may, um, carry, may carry um, disease which can be spread to other animals and other animal species and even to humans. The reptile can uh, carry viruses, for instance, West Nile viruses, bacteria, for instance, Salmonella and Leptospira. Indeed, uh, tortoises are natural reservoirs of these pathogens, or parasites, for instance, Protozoa, Cryptosporidium, which may not make the animals sick in low concentration, but they can cause health problems in the people. The increase of the urbanization and the introduction of the, the, um, the exotic species um, for reptile may act as um, drivers for the transmissions for the zoonotic parasites through the environment. So uh, now I talk uh, in general about the, uh, the genus Testudum. And uh, in, this, in this slide, okay, there is, um, we know there is a difference exists in the usage of the common terms turtle, tortoise, or terrapins. Often they use the inconsistent and sometimes contradictory. Um, contradictory. So uh, these terms are common names and do not reflect precisely the biological or the taxonomical distinction. The American Society of the Ichthyologists and the Herpetologists use the term turtle to describe all species of the order Testudines, and regardless of the, uh, whether they are land whaling or sea whaling, uh, sea whaling, for instance, careta careta. And they use tortoise as a more specific term for slow moving terrestrial species. Testudine uh, represent the major family of the order Testudine with a percentage of 62.5%. Uh, uh, and the terrestrial tortoise present in Sardinia in the wild constitute um, a specific a species of the great naturalistic interest. Behind the presence, not only of the endemic typical of this island and a few other Mediterranean districts, such as Testudo marginata, but also thanks to genetic isolation due to insularity, due to the presence of unique genetic variation and phenotypes, uh, such as the recessive albinism of the Testudo marginata and the subspecies of the Studo Greca present near the uh, Sinis areas. Despite re recent uh, legislative uh, limitation, ground tortoise are among the most uh, frequently read reader um, reptiles among unconventional pet animals. 
One of the, um, the lesser known aspects of the ties is that of the, possi the possible um, transmission of the zoonosis. In Sardinia, if we exclude some fragmented case report, we have uh, no information in this sense. And that is why it is important to update the epidemiological study with the, um, with the aim of the better knowing the parasitosis of these fascinating animals. Both wild, uh, both in wild and in uh, captivity. Next, okay. Regarding the internal um, internal anatomy, so the most obvious feature of the any tortoise is the is the shell, and this is the um, the tortoise's primary defense mechanism against the wall be predators. And the shell as a the shell uh, has remained almost unalterated by the by the predators, and and every two um, and uh, by two under the evolution. I'm sorry, I heard so much noises. Okay, thank you. So um, the shell. Harold, the uh, sorry, Harold and the Pavla, please uh, switch off uh, your microphone. Okay. The shell is basically an, an, an extension of the rib cage when unlike most vertebrates, it is housed in the outside rather than inside the body. Uh, the shell is made up of two halves, the underneath known as a plaster and the top known as the carapax. Both parts are fused together at the side by a bridge. And the wall, and the wall shell of the tortoise is made up of numerous small bones, which are covered by separated plates of the keratin, um, called, uh, common called uh, scutes. As uh, a tortoise growth, the extra layer of the keratin adding an, uh, an existing an existing uh, layer causing the growth ring. And contrary to popular belief, the tortoise cannot be accurately aged by the content these rings. However, they can uh, tell us approximately how many uh, spurs to grow to growth tortoise has had. And thus, and thus we could also gauge uh, what type of seasonal change the tortoise has in, the, in this natural environment. Abundant vegetation means more foods, which uh, related to more growth of vegetation due to extreme climatic condition will mean little food leading to uh, little or not keratin growth. The scutes of the carapax are split into come to into some categories. Uh, Nucal uh, is the skew directly above the, uh, the head. Um, the chevrolet caudal, the skew directly above the tail, and the vertebral is a single line of skew to which run, run centrally from the head to the tail. The costal, uh, they run parallel to and uh, either side of the, the vertebras, and the marginal flank, the, um, flank the costal and attach to the bride. The marginal skew have a large influence on the overall shape of the tortoise shell, and in some species, most noticeable testudo marginata, the marginal skew are extremely flared. Um, the skewed of the plastron uh, are also separately categorized, of which there are two skewed in each category. And starting from the head moving down the tail, we, we have the dural, the humeral, the pectoral, uh, abdominal, femoral, and the anal. Uh, some tortoises have a flexible hinge of their plaster, which they can use for extra protection from predators by clamping the carapax and the plaster of female shaft. Uh, some females of other species have a much less flexible plaster, but nevertheless flexible enough to move uh, slightly to head, um, to head the, um, the X laying duties. Uh, so the skeleton of tortoise is made up of two parts the exoskeleton. Carapax and plastron and the endoskeletron internal bones. The endoskeletron consists of two main groups, the appendicular skeleton, limbs, bones, and girdles, and the axial skeletron, ribs, vertebrae, and skull. The muscular, the, uh, muscular system in tortoise is quite different to that of most of uh, other vertebrates. Muscles, which are usually used to flex and twist the backbone in nearly all animals, are almost completely obsolete in tortoise due to their spine behind rigid. 
However, they have uh, enormously well-developed muscles in their flexible necks, allowing them to retract into the shell. Indeed, the order testudine are divided into two subgroups according to how they retract the, uh, their necks into, into their shells. And the mechanisms of the neck retract retraction um, is different um, phylogenetically and the suborder pleurodira retracts laterally to the side anterior to shoulder girdle while um, the order uh, the suborder cryptodira retract strain back between uh, the uh, shoulder girdle. This motion are likely due to their morphology and the arrangement of cervical vertebrae during the, the evolution of these, uh, these animals. The digestive tract in the tortoise can extract and assimilate the moisture and nutrients from food items, which to the human eye look completely dried up and will be of no nutritional benefit to most of other living creatures. And tortoise can achieve this by the means of a hind and um, a sort of I'm that uh, system, which is effecti effectively uh, like having to digestive tract. The latter of the which reabsorb any moisture from the waste products already produced by the former. Arid habitat uh, tortoise can also effectively slip up their urinary waste in the kidneys and storing valuable water in the bladder and only expelling the waste product in the form of insoluble, 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 I'm sorry, uh, UG, uh, uric acid crystals. So, uh, and finally, in, uh, the circulatory system in the heat uh, exchange in, in tortoise, we uh, like other reptiles, they are cold blooded. And this means they need to seek an external activity, heat source to keep in their body an optimum temperature range, enable to their vital organs to function properly. Tortoise do this by positioning their carapace toward the sun or artificial radiant heat source in captivity situation, of course, a practice which, uh, which uh, um, has continued from long before evolution had even considered create, um, creating uh, mammals. The coloration or the melanism of a tortoise carapax uh, varies in accordance with uh, this geographical surrounding. For instance, tortoise from the extremely hot place like part of Egypt or Morocco tend to be lighter in color, thus reflecting some of the searing head. Turkish testudo ibera, uh, for instance, are extremely melanistic, enabling uh, enable them to absorb more heat. Um, tortoise carapax incorporate teeny pores, which uh, help to trap uh, in the radiant heat. It's worth nothing uh, that an older should, uh, should never use any oils or the reptile shell as this will significant hinder in, the, in, in the, its thermoregulation capabilities. And a tortoise he, here to pump blood uh, to all the um, vital organs and the muscles group, uh, but a large, a large amount of the blood is also effectively spent under the carapax to warm up before continuing to circulate around the body. An external basking temperature range of between 25 to 35 Celsius degree is needed to allow the animal to internally thermoregulate its body temperature to the 30 uh, Celsius degrees required for the optimum metabolic uh, efficiency. And now this is just a little presentation regarding the, uh, the kind of species of uh, tortoise. Uh, if, I, if I sample, uh, three of these are um, present in, uh, in Sardinia. The first tortoise is the Testudermani, the, the um, Dermani tortoise occur in Southern Europe from the Bosphorus to Catalonia in Romania. And in Italy, the species is quite rare. Uh, while it is a widespread truth, the peninsula, uh, through showing a fragmented distribution. The Sudermani has an orange yellow base color with a beautiful brown marking, markings and which can subside with the age. This is divided into two recognized subspecies, the Tessudo Armani Armani, typical of the Italy, French and Spanish coast, and the Tessudo Armani Begeri, typical of the Mediterranean belt of the Eastern uh, Europe. As with most, uh, most species, the Tessudo Armani has male specimens that are showably smaller than the females. 
And in Italy, the environmental in which uh, fines are still possible and vital groups are present are the coastal sandy dunes, rich in, rich in uh, vegetation, and the coastal pine forest of Mediterranean pines with uh, undergrowth of Mediterranean shrubs and, uh, and so on. The second kind of, um, of species is the Testudo uh, hermani. Tessudo greca, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Tessudo greca, uh, greca greca is a Sardinian phenotype, and it is the smallest Mediterranean tortoise in Europe, and they have a background coloration of the, uh, the carapax tending to yellow sand, contrasted by the various black spots spread unevenly on the plate. Lives in coastal environments with, environments with, uh, uh, with the sand soil in the middle of dense gariga and Mediterranean scrub, and the presence of the island is attributed to the introduction of both historical in both in historical and even recent time by means, by, by men, men uh, followed by the acclimatization. acclimatization. The uh, other species uh, is uh, the Testudo marginata. The species is clearly distinguished from the other tortoise by the, by, um, by the um, elongated shape of the carapax and in its dark brown coloration with the yellowish areolas at the top each uh, shield that uh, tend to disappear at the, at the Years go by. The carapax has narrow front and red edge, both sides and serrated. I prefer mixed brushes and forests, both deciduous and uh, evergreen. The species is omnivorous, although is, uh, it has a predominantly plant based diet. And during the winter, he spends a period of latency in a hole in the ground, but can stop hibernation several times coinciding with, um, with particular uh, days, like uh, the, uh, the, other, the other species. So, and finally, uh, another kind of testudo, if I sample, is a uh, testudo claimani, the Egyptian tortoise. Egyptian tortoise is a critically endangered species of neck hiding tortoise of the family Testudidae. And the species is native to the Egypt, Libya, and Israel. It was once more widespread, but its number are now decreased. The species is nearly extinct in Egypt, and the complete extinction in the wild is a looming threat unless more action that are taken to, to protect these species. And Clemani tortoise is the smallest tortoise in the northern hemisphere, and the female tortoise are larger than the males. Males are more slender and have a longer tail. The Clemani tortoise live in desert and semi-arid habitats, usually with the compact sand and gravel plants scattered by uh, scattered rocks and shallow sandy waste and so on. Okay, and now I can start with uh, with a, um, a general uh, an overview of um, about parasites. Uh, so we know it's the current parasitic species uh, derived from the free living ancestral form, uh, which through tropics, physiological and morphological adaptation, have changed in their living condition. In the host, the parasite uh, is metabolic. Uh, the parasite meets its metabolic need. The trophic adaptation is um, is often accompanied by the morphological change. They transform the buccal apparatus, folder and textable intestine in ticks, for instance, and the acquisition for structures such as the sanction caps, hooks, both to remain um, attached to the intestinal walls and to facilitate the absorption of the host feed substances, for instance, uh, uh, some chest oats. Parasites based on their more or less neuroparasite specificity can be grouped into the parasites, parasites of known transmissible animals to men, anthroposoparasites, parasites transmissible between men and the other vertebrates, and anthroparasites, non transmissible human parasites to animals as they have high specificity parasitic. Anthroposoparasites are um, uh, of particular importance as the cause of the zoonosis, disease or infection transmitted, transmitted in, um, in the wild between vertebrate animals and the human. And a parasite is by, defini by uh, classical definition path pathogenic, also with a different degree of virulence. 
the, um, the pathogenic action, uh, which is generally carried out before the display of the parasite and or its biological forms by, the, by um, direct parasitological examination, can be carried out through different actions. Uh, the exit of the parasites from the host is important as it allows the propagation of their biological forms and then uh, and the route uh, adopted for um, facilitated the possibility for um, for both completing biological cycle and infecting as uh, many individuals as possible. Cochidiosis, for instance, require a period of, of uh, um, refining of the oocytes in the environment, so in the environment, so that from the undivided sporums, sites containing the infection sporozoites, uh, are formed numerous animal parasites, protozoa, mint arthropods, and so on, and playing the role of zoonotic agent, as they can have humans among their um, their hosts, their their receptive uh, guests. Parasite agents of zoonoses can be transmitted to humans through various ways, and the main um, the main transmission routes are the food transmission, the direct or indirect uh, fomite, for instance, contact transmission, and also the vector transmission. But um, but to what is it, uh, the zoonosis? So we know if numerous animal parasites play their role of zoonotic agent as they can have a humans among their receptive hosts. According to the classical definition, zoonoses are infection or disease that can be transmitted directly or indirectly between animals and the humans, or that can be common in both. There are more or than 200 uh, known zoonotic diseases. Mammoths, birds, reptiles, amphibians act as a reservoir and amplify hosts for the zoonotic disease. Is. The transmission of zoonosis may occur by some routes. However, some microorganisms can be transmitted in more uh, than um, one way, and zoonotic agents uh, directly transmitted from wildlife to humans, for instance, rabies virus, some zoonotic agents from sp uh, um, spread from wildlife to humans indirectly by decontaminated food and uh, the water, for instance, leptospira and salmonella. And zoonoses with a wildlife origin are spread through insect vectors, uh, for instance, mosquito and uh, or um, or, or uh, bison flies and and so on. And also, what is the anthropo? Um, I'm sorry. And what is the anthroponosis? Anthroponoses are um, an infection organism that cause the pathogenic disease and are specifically spread from humans to other animal species, including livestock pets, um, both at home and also in the veterinary clinic. In the captive animals, um, captive animals in zoological park, research laboratories, in the entertainment industries, and, uh, and, that, and, and also, of course, in wild animals. It is also known also as zooanthroponosis, and they pose a significant threat to the conservation of the endangered species. Many people are um, enjoying feeding wildlife and dietary patterns of uh, wildlife get altered because of this type of different food provisioning modes of um, provisions uh, modes by humans. We do remember which most wild animals act a reservoir of the pathogens representing a significant public health problem and affecting all continents. And again, contamination of human food and drinking water with their saliva, urine, feces, blood can transmit zoonotic disease to the humans. So uh, regarding the, the, um, the aim of the, my research, the, the aim of my study is to investigate the prevalence of the gastrointestinal parasite in tortoise, and they investigate the factors uh, um, affecting the prevalence of this parasite. Most of the more 150 publications if I use for my research refer to reptile in general, more or less 100, or the colonials 
or they could only ask or that only three papers specifically report or the genus to study. And of these 30, only four occupy, um, occupy of the study of Cryptosporidium, for instance, in uh, uh, ground tortoise. This means that we need to expand knowledge about the Cryptosporidium species in this reptile through, uh, um, or through also a new molecular um, investigations. The first step uh, in, uh, in the study of the parasite in tortoise is the sampling of the specimen through the collection of the biometric parameters. Uh, each turtle was photographed and the recognition uh, code was not. For instance, in this picture, you can see TM1. TM1 is mean uh, testudo marginata um, number one. And then the pre and the post hibernation data were not. Uh, an Excel table um, not, not the total width, uh, width and uh, the total length of the carapax and the plastron, as well as the weight. The weight is uh, fundamental, especially in the post lethargic phases, because if the individual has a weight loss greater than 10%, um, very often it's mean if uh, that the, the problem have arisen during the hibernation. And in this case, it's too good to carry out more accurate investigation. For the collection of fecal samples, each turtle was placed inside a tank containing warm water to facilitate the defecation. And fecal samples were placed. I can hear my voice. Okay. And fecal samples were placed in appropriate containers ready for the analysis. Um, so, um, okay. While most tortoises um, inhabit desert or tropical zone, and um, while once adapted to temperature climate will slow their metabolic rate to adapt to cold weather and decrease daylight hours. This process is referred to as hibernation or brumation and occur naturally, but the post hibernation period is one of the most critical time for pet tortoise and the desert, the desert the Russian, Herman, marginated tortoise do hibernate. And for the uh, for those that to hibernate, health problems after they are starting to wake up are very serious. During the hibernation, the tortoise is, is um, extremely vulnerable to um, vulnerable. They are less able to uh, to fight infections. So if they do catch catch any infection, there's even more likelihood to take hold. Uh, one of the most common problems in tortoise is the post hibernation anorexia and the infection in the mouth, respiratory diseases or oral abscess within the ears are not uncommon either. And for these reasons, the control of the weight after the hibernation is very, very important step. In this picture, you can see some of these uh, uh, injuries, uh, um, post hibernation injuries, uh, such as rat and food attacks uh, or parasitic infestation or uh, respiratory, um, respiratory illness. Now I can start to talk about the laboratory procedure. And so once the fecal sample have been taken, the laboratory tests are carried out and the methods used are the flotation for the detection for, um, of some parasite, for instance, oxure and uh, other nematodes and the modified Nielsen technique for the detection um, of the cryptosporidium. The uh, fecal fluctuation about the fecal fluctuation uh, and the fecal concentration methods are often necessary to uh, reveal the presence of the acids or the absence of the ascarid eggs. Uh, Ancylosomes, uh, cestod, cochid, um, sarcosides, toxoplasma, and jardia, and, uh, and others. And it's diluted, uh, diluted uh, in a container, a small amount of feces, five or 10 grams, with 10 milliliters of zinc sulfate, and dissolve well the feces. So when you filter the when uh, we filter the sample with the gauze and transfer to another container, in one test tube, put one or two milliliter of the filter liquid using a Pasteur pipette, and the uh, the test the, uh, the test tube is filled with uh, zinc sulfate until a positive meniscus is formed. A uh, cover glass rests on the, in the test pieces and the centrifugates for 10 minutes at 2,000 uh, um, RPM. 
And once the centrifugate is finished, the cover glass must be gently lifted and placed in a, a microscope slide. And the slide is ready to be analyzed by starting from the manual uh, magnification. Uh, a common drawback in this technique is the easy breakages of the cover glass during the centrifugation uh, step. Uh, so, um, what do you see with this method? Do you see uh, the, some kind of the eggs, um, of the eggs of oxyur and uh, helminths and other and then other nematodes that you see in this uh, this little table? Okay. But not every uh, everything we can see are um, are parasites because sometimes uh, um, in stool smears analyzed under a microscope there are often fibers of the plants, but above all pollen and seed and also um, of plants that are not normally eaten but uh, that's carried by the wind and incidentally end up in the daily ration of the tortoise. There are very specific details to the study to determine whether a structured structure is our element to eggs on an artifact, and they include size, the shape, the color, the structure, um, the presence of the opercula, and uh, and uh, and other and other features. The first problem for uh, our student is the uh, difficulty of the recognition of the parasites. Uh, um, first of all, um, from the artifact to parasites or pseudoparasites found in fecal specimens and uh, other specimens of the gastrointestinal tract. And this element or components include food residue and food residue and undigested undig products, including, of course, pollen and epithelial cell, mucus, and other secretion from the digestive tract. The detection and the identification of the element and the protozoa can be challenged mostly for an expert student. And for this reason, each sample should also be observed by an expert parasitologist. Uh, I remember if four eyes, two of which are very trained, are better than two unexpert eyes, of course. And uh, several resources are essential, essential to aiding in the identification. These include a calibrated ocular micrometer to determine the size range of the structure. And other necessary tools include the publication that provide an excellent image of parasite and artifacts, as well as the tables with the sites and the characteristic of the various parasitic form found in specimen. Uh, in order to, um, to have a complete uh, throughout understanding of the parasitology is um, it's imperative to have an extensive knowledge of the life cycle of the parasite infecting the animals. And the various parasite life cycle, including those of nematodes, chestos, trematodes, and protozoa, uh, may be simple or can be very complex. Knowledge of the parasitic life cycle uh, should include how parasite infection are acquired, the routes of the entry, including the, the ingestion of the infected stage, and the ingestion of uh, um, intermediate host, uh, or the ingestion of an untransport vehicle or host which contain the infective stage, the skin penetration, of course, of an infective stage. And uh, for instance, elementic life cycle may involve adult male and female with sexual reprodu reproduction or the parasites may be hermaphroditic. The major contrasting limiting in the study on the species of nematode affecting tortoise are the impossibility in, in the identification at species level the eggs uh, retrieved in a coprological examination and the likely existence of sympatric subspecies and cryptic species of uh, nematode not strictly um, testudo uh, genus uh, species specific. Thus, the results of this survey call uh, for investigation also on molecular studies that will be instrumental in solving taxonomic question and identify the putative cryptic species. Uh, finally, some dynasty species specific molecular tools for the coprodiagnosis will be um, of an importance to, to understand in uh, symptomatic animals the real pathogenic effect of the oxyur that nowadays is still more, more um, much easier issues. So another kind of, um, um, of uh, um, 
another kind of uh, laboratory uh, technique is the, um, for the topological examination is the uh, modified Nielsen stain um, for the, the fecal mares has already has been established for Cochidian protozoa, in particular all sized the, of um, the cryptosporidium species. The genius coloring modified by uh, modified for, for cryptosporidium um, have some steps. First, you crawl fresh waters on an object, carry slide and uh, and uh, air dry, and fix with absolute methanol and let air dry it for two minutes, and color the basic phenic, phenic um, fuchsina for five minutes, rise in running water. The color decoration in ethanol acid uh, zero three. Um, 0.3% uh, and for a few seconds until you um, you eliminate the excess of the dye uh, and rinse in running water a contrast with uh, methylene blue for 30 seconds rinse in running water uh, another time and let uh, it dry mount in synthetic resin with the objective cover and then the the um, the, 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 prepara the preparation is uh, start to be examination. So now another problem regarding uh, this um, laboratory technique is uh, the, the correct protocol for have a correct identification. Um, performing the, the, uh, the wrong protocol can lead to incorrect reading of the smears. In the image above, you can see a smear well um, were prepared things with the right amount of constraint, and uh, uh, the result is a clear sample with obvious, obvious, obvious um, cryptosporidium uh, um, identif identification. At the bottom, well, you can see my first experience in the file of window preparation, um, preparation the coloring of Zionis. That's a complete disaster. And this amount of contrast staining was excessive or the lane time with the methylene blue was too long. And so there are so much uh, steps, wrong steps in, in the preparation of the second kind of, uh, of glasses. For this reason, all steps must be performed with the meticulous care and from smear feces to, treat, to treating with the contrast reagent. Those who, like me, have little practice with these methods uh, will find themselves having to perform the analyze over and over again until they obtain uh, easy, easily uh, observed uh, samples. So, and now results of my study, of my, of my analysis. Uh, for now, I, I have a um, sample of a total 82 animals belonging to different species of uh, tortoise. And the epidemiological investigation, uh, that is the um, population study, uh, revealed a very high prevalence toward endoparasite. The information necessarily outlined and emerged the epidemiological aspect of disease are geographical spread and habitat, the species and categories of the HEM involved and or risk, the reservoir vectors and, and others, and the mode of transmission and sources of the contagion, the factual conditioning, the once onset, the diffusibility and the maintenance in kind, the frequency of the appearance, mortality, morbidity, lethality, and also, and so on. And the species most found so far have been obscured, isolated in all group native tortoise, often with very high prevalence. Obviously, um, all data will be re-quantified because there is the possibility of a wrong reading of the slide that can uh, cause a false positive. I would like to point out that the, um, the data in this study are not finally, but are still constantly updated. For now, about um, 29 pseudomarginal analyses uh, about this, five are positive to cryptosporidium. And regarding the Sudormani, 44 uh, Sudormani analyses, uh, 10 are positive for cryptosporidium. And um, the pseudo Greek analyze one and uh, is uh, uh, negative for crypto. And um, also claim money, each, uh, each sample analyzed, and all uh, each sample are positive for cryptosporidium. So, 
regarding the discussion of, um, of my study, of my field experience, uh, and the pathogenic uh, action uh, of these parasites seem to be quite well tolerated by the animals when they are in good nutritional condition and are not exposed to other bacterial, viral, or parasitic disease. During the sampling, happening happened to take samples from subjects in apparent health, but uh, who during the analysis show um, a fairly large percentage, uh, percentage of the oxures. Why? This is happening. Probably there's organisms um, have routinely isolated in healthier tortoise. Also, if a infection may cause a significant pathology, and tortoise are considered a common source of reptile associated salmonellosis, an important zoonosis. Reported worldwide salmonella um, frequently, frequently reported in tortoise, and it is um, considered to be a part of the intestinal flora and uh, does not cause a significant clinical signs, except in uh, stress or immunocompromised animals. Where may cause salmonellosis, an important um, um, reptilian zoonosis. Several species of oxyure commonly inhabit the colon of the turtles, but uh, are rarely considered pathogenic or zoonotic. If infection may be one cause of anorexia in turtles coming out of, of hibernation, if I said previously. Uh, uh, studies conducted so far in Italy show oxyurs are the most prevalent nematoparasite in uh, these animals. And this research allows uh, uh, us to outline the epidemiolog epidemiological um, picture of the main parasitic species present in ter terrestrial tortoise in Sardinia, in ground tortoise. And another interesting aspect of this research is the detection of the species of potential zoonotic interest, such as the cryptosporidium, in a small percentage of the um, tortoise examinated. Um, so the gastrointestinal parasites are a common diagnosis on routine fecal screening of the captive uh, tortoise. There are a wide variety of parasites reported dividing into uh, the ailments, trematode, chesto, nematode with the oxyurs, ascides, and others, and uh, various protozoa. Oxyurs are generally considered to be a commensal within the tortoise intestinal tract, and have been suggested to have a beneficial effect in uh, um, char charging uh, up fecal matter and prevent constipation. Ascides have been associated with more variety of pathology due to larval migration through the viscera. And generally, ascides are unlike to cause disease in low numbers. Other, other pathological effects associated with the ascaris include the gastrointestinal ulceration and thromboembolism and a vascular necrosis. And the gastrointestinal protozoa reported in, uh, in tortoise include cryptosporidium, other cochidia, flagellata, and most common ciliatis of the, um, for instance, valentidium and uh, uh, nictoterus, a very common C, both of which have been suggested to be commensals of the gastrointestinal tract in tortoise at the GES cellulose. An increased number of ciliatis may be detected at time of the gastrointestinal disturbance and have been suggested to cause uh, some uh, symptoms and some, uh, some injuries, uh, for instance, colitis. Uh, regarding the elements, uh, elements uh, are a common parasite of the, the tortoise, and uh, several species of oxyurs, the pinworms, common inhabit uh, the colon of the tortoise, but are rarely um, considered, uh, next slide, considered Next, okay, thank you, Manuela. Pathogenic or zoonotic. HIV infection might be one um, cause of the anorexian tortoise coming out of the hibernation. So um, in general, reptile digestive tract can be infected with a wide range of trichostrongyl, strongyl, uh, and ascarids and other nematode families. And the pathogenic effect of ascarids nematodes depends on the parasitic number of food availability and the infection animal overall condition. The presence of the worm in gastrointestinal tract may cause gastritis, which ulceration and perforation of the stomach wall. The diagnosis of this infection is based on microscopic examination of the eggs found in the feces. And in this video, Okay, you can see two larvae found inside the feces of a Hermanite studio uh, before the flotation technique was performed.
Okay. So, are larvae the pinworms, the oxyurea parasite belonging to the superfamily Oxyuridea, and are commonly found in reptiles at least 12 different genera, have been described in snake, lizard, and chelonia. And oxyur are frequently observed in routine fecal screening. Tortoise are, tortoise are, the, are usually asymptomatic. In large number, pinworms may cause an upset stomach, lack of appetite, and weight loss. And oxyur, such as the tachygonitria um, genus, are common in colon of tortoise, although they are usually non pathogenic. And this is paper. You can see the massive uh, parasitation by tachygonitria oxyuridae um, parasites in a 15 years old male Mediterranean um, Herman tortoise. At the time of the clinical examination, the tortoise had a numerous little parasite around this cloaca. Uh, upon the, cli um, the clinical examination, the tortoise was alert and awake, but it had a low weight and was dehydrated and cachetic. The eyes were uh, sunk in, in, in the orbits, and the, the oral mucosa was, uh, was pale. The limb movement were diminished and the parasites were uh, uh, whitish, measuring about five millimeters in length and performed group of hundreds that occupied the entire tail, which were observed demacroscopically in outlying areas of the cloaca. Control of pin work number is important in free living reptiles because their parasite can cause malabsorption or intestinal uh, problems. And in addition, they can cause tissular migration and visceral inflammatory lesion. For all these reasons, it's very, very important the periodic control uh, of the tortoise, um, mostly of uh, the nephical samples. Another kind of, uh, um, of parasite, if I found in my during my laboratory experience, is the angusticecum. Next, is the most common ascaride uh, reported in the, in tortoise, and angusticecum is maybe found attached to intestinal mucosa and feed on mucosal fluid products of host digestion and cellular debris. And currently, species of the Ascaridinus and Gusticecum in tortoise seem more pathogenic than the oxyur since their life cycle um, of the Angusticecum uh, SPP include larva migration and fuel development in various organs. And this is associated with anorexia and the weight loss. The eggs of Angusticecum have a three layered shell and a, a sticky external mucopolysaccharide, they change the layer, which make these eggs adhesive to, to the surface of the environmental structure and resistant to commonly use disinfectant. Due to the high tenacity of the angusticecum SPP eggs, the, the management of even eradication, eradication of these, uh, these parasites is a very, very strong uh, challenge. So another kind of parasite, if I found, are the protozoa. Uh, the most common are the Nyctoterus and Balantidium. Uh, Balantidium sp and the Nyctoterus are ciliated protozoa, which uh, are frequently encountered in colonial stools. And they are considered as normal in habit of their normal colonial digestive tract flora, and they play a useful role in the digestion of the cellulose. Therefore, in most cases, they appear to cause their host leader or not distress. However, from time, uh, time to time, due to a variety of reasons, such as that are in, in wrong dietary or drugs treatment, this protozoa may uh, outnumber the normal proportion, resulting in pathogenic consequences. Uh, for, this, for instance, severe uh, irritation of intestinal walls, and the symptom may range from the acute diarrhea, resulting in dehydration and weight loss, into chronic as with a complete loss of normal digestive tract flora, and uh, in ancient, as a result of an um, inability to digest, uh, to metabolize the, the food uh, consumed. Uh, Balantidium is the one of the uh, easiest protozoa to identify, and this organism is large and the egg-like egg shape, uh, quite active but slow moving, and is frequently encountered in, 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 in a fecal examination. And the, the size of balantidium are um, the infection stage responsible for the transmission of balantidiasis. And they also most often acquire the size uh, throughout the ingestion 
pollution or fecal contaminate, contaminated um, food or water uh, following the ing and ingestion existation uh, occurs in the small intestine and the trophozoites colonize the large intestine. The trophozoites reside in the lumen of the large intestine of, uh, of humans and or um, the animals uh, where they replicated by binary fission during which uh, conj uh, conjunction may occur. And trophozoites undergo existation uh, to produce uh, infected sites. Some trophozoites inv invade the wall of the colon and uh, multiple um, um, in a multiple uh, times, as some return of lumen and disintegrate. Mature sites uh, are passed with the feces into the, into, into the environment. And Nicoteus is also a large lemon-like shape, active, slow-moving organism. The life of Nicoteus is very ident is, is identical to this of the Balantidium, and the size are, are the infection stage. And the trophozoite can be um, found in the in the intestine, and is it um, as of uh, um, it is also um, doubtful pathogenicity. So, and now I talk about cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium is a topic very, um, very interesting in, uh, in, in tortoise. Uh, we know if uh, um, cryptosporidiosis is, um, is a cosmopolitan disease caused by an apicomplex some parasite of the genus Cryptosporidium and affects the gastrointestinal tract of the human as well as a wide range of companion, farms, laboratories, and wild animals. And the infection occurs via ingestion of infective oocytes by fecal or waterborne and food associated transmission. Although person to person and animal to person contact represent an um, another important source of the infection. In immunocompetent also, cryptosporidium causes acute self-limiting, but often severe diarrhea, while in immunocompromised subjects, the parasites cause chronic and progressive illness. Over the last decade, the interest for um, the scientific community in cryptosporidium has increased enormously because of its public health the implication and molecular study have proved the, the new insight into how humans and animals act as a reservoir of this infection. While there are dominant anthropoenotic and zoonotic species affecting humans, it has been suggested that all um, cryptosporidium genotypes can potentially uh, be hazardous to humans. Cryptosporidiosis uh, in companion and captive exotic animals has received particular attention in recent years due to public health concern. Uh, among the exotic animals, cryptosporidiosis is snake and lizard is a chronic li uh, life uh, treating disease. And despite the popularity of uh, pet tortoise, there is little information about the cryptosporidium in, uh, turtle, in both turtle and tortoise. Cryptosporidium has a complex life cycle involving both sexual meiosis and asexual replication, mitosis, but the monoxenus uh, cycle. And furthermore, is, it has a many morphology formation to compete in uh, its life cycle. And the oocytes are excreted in the environment from human and animals through the, uh, the, uh, the feces. And after the uh, nose uh, ingests infective oocytes, existation will occur to release for sporozoite, and the sporozoite will invade the gastrointestinal tract and develop to merozoites, gammons, and oocytes. Um, oocytes exist um, into form thin wall with reinfected in the gastrointestinal tract, and a uh, uh, thick wall uh, with um, will excrete in the in the in the environmental truth um, truth feces. In the specific the um, the cryptosporidium life cycle. Uh, next. So uh, a, detail, uh, a detailed account of the life cycle starts from the sporulated oocyte released by the infected host. After that, the vertebrate host ingests sporulated oocyte through the consumption of contaminated food or drink, and the process of the existation will occur to release four infections per oocyte. And this progression occurs in the gastrointestinal tract uh, triggered by CO2, temperature over 37 Celsius degrees and pancreatic enzymes and pH acid of uh, bile salts. 
all um, the OSIs uh, add to two types. One uh, is the thin wall, one layer of a protein lipidic carbohydrate matrix, and another is a thick wall consisting of inner and outer OSI walls. Uh, only the thick wall is shedding into the environmental, and the sites of the cryptosporidium OSI is typical of a nearly spherical with, uh, uh, with the small sites around the four, four uh, six nanometers on the average and they have obscure internal structure and they all mark characteristic of the mature oocytes contain four sporozoites but no sporozoites. The sporozoites are nucleated spindle shape with a dimension of um, 5.0 to 0.5 nanometers. And the applicable complex part play a function in the, uh, in the gliding motility to assess the, large, the largest um, cells. So uh, the nucleus is uh, on the center of the cells, for so as recognized, are penetrated to the target host cell, including stomach and intestine. Uh, invading sporozoites are from paracetophorous vacuole uh, surrounding where they can differentiate it into trophozoite stage. Within the paracetophorous is uh, um, is uh, the, um, the, the vacuole. Uh, so the trophozoites commenced through mitosis divisions uh, to produce type 1 merons, which contain eight merozoites. A type 1 merozoite um, can invade the host cell again and reproduce uh, accessual from the other type of merons, which contain eight merozoites or type 2 mer merons, um, which contain only four merozoites. Merozoite. Truth, merozoite released from type 2 merons are less um, um, uninformed in shape, slightly larger and less active. And when compared to merozoite released from type 1 merons, um, type 2 um, merozoites can be developed to macrogamont male or macrogamont uh, female, which undergoes sexual reproduction. Um, the, the process called uh, gametogony. And each microgamont produces 16 microgametes, which are uh, root like, uh, not flagellated, and uh, it will fertilize with uh, uncellular adjacent macrogamonts, a spherical to an overstructure four to six nanometers in diameter with a large central nucleus. After these two mitosis division, the, um, the zygote uh, development either in a thin wall or size covering only a single layer membrane or a thick wall or size containing two layer membranes. The thick wall uh, or size are released through the feces and, toler and, uh, and tolerance for months in the unsuitable environment. And whereas the thin wall or size can uh, cause a reinfection within the gastrointestinal tract, the same host, but by uh, rupturing and release the infective uh, um, sporozoite. Regarding uh, the, um, the kind of uh, cryptosporidium uh, in, in the specific uh, of the, the tortoise, uh, in 2010, a new kind of cryptosporidium genotype was uh, detected and genetically characterized in a marginated tortoise in Italy uh, in 2007, but uh, the publication is um, about 2010. And the name is Cryptosporidium SPX Testudo Marginata CRIT20. Uh, the phylogenetic analysis of this isolated indicate that this uh, cryptosporidium was unique and belonged to the intestinal clade, and this finding were layered to confirm by the detection of genetic homologies um, of um, isolated from a python and a chameleon from a Spain and be a recent research in the United States. The latter study present both the occurrence of intestinal lesion in a pancake tortoise and in a Russian tortoise, and the genetic characterization of the, um, the isolated, together with the first picture of the um, endogenous stage of the cryptosporidium CR um, IT uh, 20. 
Um, so uh, the phylogenetic uh, um, interference based on the sequence representing a small subunit of the nuclear ribosomial, uh, ribosomial RNA gene, the SSU, of uh, this isolate confirm the pathological finding because this cryptosporidium was related to the intestinal group and support previous results into the marginata from Italy. Um, the present, uh, this, uh, the, um, this paper, um, this uh, scientific, um, the present scientific data on the cryptosporidium uh, CRIH20 support the, its classification and a new species of cryptosporidium causing intestinal um, disease in, uh, in tortoise. Although fewer morphological uh, and biological aspects are yet to be, of course, elucidated, it is pro pro proposed that this cryptosporidium is uh, designated cryptosporidium ducis marci. For this reason, the molecular analysis are very, very important, are fundamental for search, for detect the new species of the cryptosporidium. As I have already told you, as the, the, the PCR analysis carried out on in this moment, the PCR analysis carried out on the sample I collected have no ELD results, maybe for a false positive, and uh, all the analyses that are carried out in the laboratory are closely related and making mistake means to not obtain results or even worse, having an impact um, of, the, uh, of the health um, of the animals. Uh, the first, uh, I think, if uh, the, the first uh, important uh, gateway of the transmission of cryptosporidium in the world is the illegal wildlife trade. So uh, the illegal wildlife trade is a gateway for the introduction um, next, for the introduction um, of zoonotic and no zoonotic uh, pathogen. The latter behind of concern for the health and the conservation of the endemic wildlife. Uh, although several species of zoonotic pathogens are commonly related to wildlife globally, reports on the occurrence associated with this practice are very scanty. The um, illegal wildlife trade is a global trend phenomenon due to the attractive pr uh, prices, the low effort may be poachers to acquire wildlife, and the more lenient legal penalties appear for people involved in this activity. And uh, this, I think, criminal network is composed of people from uh, uh, several uh, socioeconomic levels, from local subsistence poachers to transition to, to um, transitional yet yeah, organi organized crime. People from local community in developing countries actually influence the uh, illegal wildlife trade due to factors such as low income, poverty, and illiteracy. In uh, popular markets, several wildlife species are in contact with each other before behind sold or shipped uh, to, to other regions, and this behind a driver for the interspecific transmission of the pathogens. They increase the human-wildlife contact, poor biosafety measure, and the high-risk taxa for zoonosis were also accounted as a risk factor for this presence and the dissemination of the pathogens in, uh, in these markets. The ectoparasite may also be exported along with the, the roast to new geographical areas through the illegal transport, transport of uh, the, um, the life, wildlife or their deriva derivative, for, for instance, the wet hides. And uh, this has been observed in Europe with several exotic tick species being introduced via illegal importation of reptile, especially from Africa countries. And the introduction of exotic ectoparasite through the illegal wildlife trade may result in the spreading along with the zoonotic viruses, bacteria, ailments, and protozoa they transmit, resulting in a serious consequence for the public health. In addition to that, uh, this practice may lead to the environmental issues such as the invasion and the establishment of the exotic animal population in the local ecosystem and potentially uh, threatening indigenous species due to the risk of the introduction of novel pathogen, exo um, pet, as exotic pet, um, for instance, small mammal, reptiles, uh, maybe carried out uh, of uh, several zoonotic viruses, um, for instance, um, for instance uh, um, Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, the, the, the West Nile virus, bacteria such as Salmonella or Leptospira, and parasite, and parasite, including Giardia, Cryptosporidium, and other associated with um, the human outbreaks of reptile-related salmonellosis. 
were detected in, uh, in tortoise in the Sudo Greca, illegally imported from North Africa to Italy, blinding risk of the human infection with a uh, pathogenic salmonella. So, <clears throat> several studies uh, confirm the importance of the controlling of the illegal trade of the exotic effects and rise, uh, rise awareness regarding the environmental and, um, and the public risk associated with the release of these animal in the, in the environment. Uh, the major threats uh, for uh, regarding this kind of practice, the illegal wildlife trade, are the threats for humans, if I said previously, and uh, for uh, our endemic species. Uh, next, for this, the, um, about to this, uh, this study, various studies confirm the, um, the dangers of illegal importation of exotic animals and their uh, incorrect use as a pet. In the public, in, in this publication on the left, uh, highlights a case of severe childhood salmonellosis uh, related to a pet turtle, the red uh, haired slider that I can skip the elegance. A six year old girl had a gastroenteritis complicated with a sepsis caused by serotype paratyphy B, uh, which shared the same post fear Anthrophoresis yeah, profile with the organism, with the, um, the organism uh, isolated from a pet turtle. Based on the literature survey on childhood invasive salmonellosis acquired from reptiles, this case is the first documented reptile associated salmonellosis, including septis caused by this kind of uh, serotypes. And Trachemiscripta elegans frequently refers to, um, refer to uh, to as uh, the red hair slide is an invasive species commonly treated worldwide as a popular pet. In, addic in addiction, uh, this kind of uh, this species of trachemis is able to survive in most uh, winters in Europe, which lead to a permanent establishment of these species and in, this, in, uh, in, this, uh, in these regions. Then the presence of trachemis crypta and elegance in new habitats may increase the risk of the introducing new parasite with the item with them, which may have a treat to um, indigenous European tartars, for instance, for our um, emission bicularis or for the Sicilian, Sicilian species, the, the Emistinacris. There are only two families of native freshwater turtles in Europe, Emididae and Geomididae. Species of the, um, the species of the Emididae are the most dominant, particularly the European pond turtles, Emisobicularis, and Emisobiculari was the most widely distributed aquatic uh, colonian in Europe, but at present is declining in several regions of its range and is such a no register as endangered species in the Bern Convention. Uh, the presence of Trachemis crypta elegans in, uh, in the European wetlands is one of the potential threats to the natural population of native turtle species. And Trachemis crypta elegans uh, has several advantages over native turtle species that seem to, um, to confirm a, a competitive predominance over them, such as lower age of maturity, higher fecundity, and more effective defensive behavior. Uh, as the metabolism of uh, turtles is governed by the, the body temperature. Basking is a vital, um, a vital activity in regions where mean temperatures fall um, below minimum requirements and the greater aggressiveness and competitive ability of for basking of um, Trachemis scripta elegans has been demonstrated to um, affect the survival of native turtles, potentially strongly impact the survival of native species post wintering. Uh, the introduction of the species of turtle can not only compete uh, with native European turtle, but also negatively affect the leather by disease transmission, such as in the case of co-invasive um, parasites. Um, most of non-invasive parasites have been co-introduced co with an alien host species, almost all of these are ailments, and although the co-invasive parasites are often considered to cause disease, emerge and produce a high morbidity in native hosts, only a few studies have assessed to, um, parasite transmission from American turtles to um, indigenous European turtles, and the ability for parasites to transfer not only from exotic to native turtle, but also uh, in the opposite direction, demonstrate their, their height adaptability and height invasive uh, potential. So thank you for the patience and thank you uh, to, for, thanks for all and uh, so
if you have some question, I'm here. Me or Professor Bacazia. Thank you, Federica. If you switch out the, the screen, I would like to, to, okay. to share my screen. I don't know if you want to, if you see my screen. Yes. Yeah. So this is one, uh, one of uh, Federica winning moments in, uh, in this month because uh, she uh, understand how to sample blood from uh, turtles. But uh, the problem is not uh, on the technique, but that uh, he she has a lot of fear of uh, needles, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, uh, she finally sex. This uh, just uh, uh, something to to tell to tell you that uh, everything is possible if you want. And um, I'm very glad of uh, Federica presentation because uh, she um, explained to you. What is the real life of students of wildlife uh, inside research with also difficulties, but also she she has uh, done a very good presentation guided by by me, uh, but uh, it was a very nice review. So if you if you have uh, any question, uh, probably uh, there are some questions from vets that are not so much indicated in this case. Uh, but um, if you, I don't know if uh, there is anybody that uh, would like to address some question. Hmm. I think that, uh, uh, or you was too clear of they are sleeping. That's not, I don't think. Maybe sleeping, maybe they are sleeping. Yeah, yeah what uh, I would like to show, uh, to show you another picture. May I ask a question? Uh, Harold? No, Alireza. No, Alireza uh, writes as uh, order crypto gregarida, but I think it's a refusal, Alireza. I apologize. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no I have a question uh, about the uh, species of uh, cryptosporidium that has already been uh, diagnosed uh, in uh, the uh, turtles and tortoises, and if they are uh, zoonotic, actually. Uh, Alireza, I will reply to you because uh, at this day, at this point, uh, we mm, we perform a morphological analysis by genes modified, and we extract DNA for most of the samples. But uh, and we are running PCR, but we have some problems because, as you know, um, for a crypto, you should sometimes to concentrate pieces, and this is a uh, a little bit of hard work with uh, turtles. So we are uh, uh, today, today, um, we get some sample from south of Sardinia of the positive ones. We will merge um, as much as we can for several days. And then we will repeat PCR because uh, our latest results were not uh, successful in showing which is the, the which are the species. I suppose that uh, here we will find some reptilian cryptos, but uh, as we are endemic uh, uh, for um, Cryptosporidium parvum and, and uh, other, other species for uh, sheep and from uh, cattle, I imagine that we can also find some uh, of these species also in turtles, um, especially when uh, there are animals that uh, lead uh, sympathy uh, with uh, this other host. But uh, I will tell you this, and I hope that you will review this, uh, this paper because with uh, Federica, we, our goal is to, to draft um, a paper before her thesis and to publish as soon as possible. She has a sample 82 samples, but uh, we have already other 120. Uh, so we have uh, the numbers to publish uh, an extensive uh, paper on this, uh, but uh, we have to complete this part regarding crypto because it's very important. By the way, in these images, I can show you uh, a necropsy of uh, a testudo marginata that died for other causes. And what do you see here? 
are a lot of uh, small parasites. All these are parasites. Can you see my screen? Yeah. All these are uh, oxurid. And uh, so uh, my opinion is that, uh, and also that of so many breeders, that probably these worms, um, even they are so impressive, it doesn't make uh, uh, any clinical impact. Anyway, Harold, I see your, your question, but uh, it's uh, hard to say what, what, what is clinic in, in a turtle because it's so inexpressive animal and it's very difficult to interpret uh, clinical, uh, clinical patterns. By the way, I think that uh, this picture can be complicated uh, some other uh, problems uh, when there are other intestinal infection or the, of the animal as uh, other um, parasites. Uh, I think that, but generally that uh, it's uh, impressive, but is not uh, a sanitary problem for Taltos because in this case, uh, the animal uh, died for traumatic lesions, but uh, it seems that uh, it was uh, fine, but uh, it seems, uh, you know, that is uh, quite, uh, if you see a turtle, uh, yes, you can see when it is um, not so, so vital uh, when it should be, but uh, other things is quite uh, hard working. Okay. I don't know if you wanted to, to ask other, uh, other things. And uh, what is uh, interesting, but uh, also Federica mentioned the tra trachemis scripta. We are plenty of that. And uh, it could be also interesting to, to, to study what kind of parasite in this case uh, were brought from other location such as uh, uh, South Florida or uh, so on. And uh, this will be probably a next step of this uh, research work. By the way, you, you see also, okay, you see also how um, a student work in uh, preparing her thesis. And uh, so if, uh, if you choose this kind of, uh, of training, uh, uh, this could be an opportunity. And uh, what is uh, very important is that you focus uh, hands-on uh, with problems. And uh, I understand that now is not so, so, so easy to do, but uh, for example, with uh, Federica, we success in it because she began uh, during a pandemic uh, uh, and uh, she is uh, currently working on that because uh, 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 thesis work is uh, allowed by our department uh, rules. So she is working right now in lab. She follow our procedures um, because in the lab can enter only personal of the lab. And um, she didn't participate to any party in the weekend because uh, as care of uh, his professor, right, Federica? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> that's and, right. And uh, that's it. So when, when you want, I think that uh, every, every single professor can host more than one uh, thesis. I probably is not uh, the time, but considering the COVID uh, problems, it, it could be that you start before uh, the time in which, uh, which is probably the, the, the beginning of the second year. But uh, considering that uh, we are going to a summer uh, breakout with COVID and probably it would be more easy to, to do some work, some field work, I suggest you to, to start thinking on that. Not with me, uh, this is not the publicity of myself, but uh, just start thinking in uh, um, how you can do that. And uh, probably uh, if you are not in Sardinia, speaking with some colleagues, uh, you can also find a, a place near you in which you can do some part of uh, tirocinio of the training and uh, do that. Okay. There is a question by Harold Salant. 
Yeah. Dar sunt gustit ce cum follow the full liver lung life cycle, as mena scale of the other. We don't know. I, I don't know, Harold. It's a... What is interesting of this species, but uh, there are many things to, to discover and we are... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we are doing that, uh, but um, and also the difficulty is that uh, it's wildlife species, therefore, is not easy to to manage all the clinical things as um, in domestic animals, because in domestic animals I, I just ask um, an ethical permission to the ministry and. That's it. Uh, here I have to ask to the ministry and then at the authority for wildlife conservation uh, and usually is uh, so complicated. So I think uh, it's all. Uh, I don't know if there are any, any questions from uh, our students. I don't think so. And uh, so uh, see you on Tuesday with uh, another seminar and uh, uh, we'll come back after these two days on reptilians on, on mammals and uh, particularly on red fox uh, parasites okay see okay. you and many thanks for your uh, oh, attention sorry excuse me do you have do we have other seminars ne the next week the, uh, the next week I will, uh, sorry, because Because will... now we are starting, you know, optional courses in the afternoon, so it would be better for us to know in advance. Okay, yes. I will, um, I will uh, tell you now, but uh, I will also make a recap by email, because I didn't, uh, I didn't send you the, um, the seminar um, because I Sometimes I need the I wait the, the answer of the experts of my colleagues, and they didn't give me uh, when we start the courses. Anyway, there is a, uh, there is a seminar on uh, on uh, eight April. Another one will be at uh, one o'clock of the afternoon on Monday, twelve. Okay, and uh, uh, there will be. Other, other, uh, another one on uh, uh, Tuesday, 20 April, with um, David Modri again on uh, um, on parasite of primates, and there, and then there will be another one on 22 April with Professor Luca Rossi, and this lesson will be addressed to um, all uh, people, that, uh, particularly all students that didn't have any, um, any uh, how do you say, background on parasitologies, because he, uh, he will uh, deepen on, uh, on some basic uh, uh, activity of parasites on uh, their hosts, and the interaction also differences between uh, domestic and uh, wildlife species, and it will be interesting very interesting and then i think that there is the last one but it, it is at nine o'clock of uh, of the morning the 29th of april with a uh, professor airoshi sato from uh, japan on parasites of birds and that's it for for the external for the seminar with external people and uh, I don't. I, I have to count how many hours uh, we we need to complete the course, and we for sure we have to to do several arguments. But uh, these are the extra seminar. Do you have problems with uh, these uh, dates? Yeah, we should check the calendar first. I don't have here in my in my hands, but we should double check because if uh, those seminars are not in the scheduled time of your hours, then we should ask to the other uh, to other my colleagues. But uh, I don't think that there is anyone that makes seminar at one o'clock. Yeah, that's true. But then we have a full afternoon with other yeah. hours, yeah. and sometimes even in the morning. So you know, it's kind of difficult <laughs> to follow. Yeah, um, without having a proper lunch break. That, that's all. So perfect. Uh, anyway, I think that uh, uh, this uh, this seminar are, are, are is a, are resources for for you because uh, um, 
yes, for Federica and probably with Francesca, it's easy to, to, to share the experience, but people like uh, David Modri or Hiroshi Sato are very difficult to catch. So I don't know if you realize that you were very lucky to, to have uh, as a professor with, with me at the lesson because of their, they open to you another world. And uh, I think that uh, even you, you were not lucky for the practice uh, for, the, for the theory, it's a, it's a, good, uh, a good year. Prof, so yeah. these seminars do not count in the hours that we should have a have lessons. We have to recover all the hours. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I, these seminars are organized. Most of the seminars are organized for you. Uh, they are open because I decide to to make a public engagement. But uh, it's something which I work with the colleagues, uh, especially addressed for you. So we will count it as uh, hours of lessons. And then uh, I will uh, just uh, complete the program with uh, the topics uh, that uh, were not uh, touched by, 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 uh, by what we have done until now. Okay. Okay. So many thanks and uh, see you on next lecture. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Grazie mille. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao.